Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be talking about how to make your application a little bit better by including the Google Sign-In SDK. Now, if you're interested in the written form of this tutorial guide, here is the step-by-step -step on how to do that um, by visiting my website. And if you're interested in watching me do it live, well, let's go into Xcode right now. Okay, now that we're back into Xcode, I wanted to show you what Google Sign-In looks like in an application called Touch of Modern that you're seeing on the screen right now. So scrolling through the walkthrough here, I'm gonna tap on the single sign-in button on the very bottom, and that's going to allow Touch of Modern to access my user email, and then that logs me into Touch of Modern, and then I can browse the sales and the products thereafter. So the question now is how do we integrate Google Sign-In? So let's go to Chrome and I'm gonna search for Google Sign-In iOS SDK. That'll lead me to the guide on how to install this uh, written by the Google team. Um, <clears throat> the easiest way to perform the installation is to use CocoaPods. And I'm gonna show you how to do that by, let's see, all tabbing into Xcode I'm going to hit Command Shift N, create a new uh, single view application like this. I'm going to call this Google Sign In Demo. And hit Next. Next to save it somewhere in your hard drive. I'm going to hit the iPhone 6S simulator, run. And everything looks A OK. Now, the next thing we wanted to do is to create a pod file to install the necessary uh, Google Sign-In pod. Um, to do this really, really quickly, I'm gonna go into Xcode and then right-click on this target here and then create a new file and hit iOS other, empty. And let's create our pod file like that. And here, let's just include this single line of pod and then hit Command S to save that. Now, I'm gonna to go to terminal. If you guys are not familiar with it, it's not too scary, I promise you. I'm gonna drag this file into terminal and then I'm gonna erase the pod file part of that text. Going to the very beginning of the line, I'm gonna hit CD to change into the project directory and I'm gonna hit pod install. <clears throat> so what it's doing now is installing the proper libraries to run the sign-in project. And it's telling me to <clears throat> close the Xcode session, which is this right here. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna stop the task. And now it's telling me to open this file here. I'm just gonna do that by executing the open command. Now I have my project ready with the pods here and the target project here. So I'm gonna change to 6S again, run. And now we are ready to start integrating the uh, sign-in library portion of the project. Okay, um, the next thing that Google wants us to do is to get a configuration file. So clicking that, we are launched into this little helper menu here. We call it uh, sign-in, I think it's uh, demo. It doesn't really matter what you call it in the app name. Uh, as long as you get the correct bundle identifier by going into your project target there, hit command A, copy, paste, and then continue to configure uh, services. This normally takes roughly five to 10 seconds depending on how Google is feeling. So Google feels all right today. Hit enable Google sign in. All right, that looks good. Generate configuration file download Google services. <clears throat> okay. And if you open this file, you'll notice that it has client ID and reverse client ID. Those are the two important uh, pieces of information in that configuration file. So I'm going to go to my downloads directory or wherever this is stored. Let's see, show and finder. And that's the file. I'm going to let's see, go back to Xcode. I'm going to drag that directly into my project like this. And copy items if needed, doesn't really matter so much. Uh, going back to Chrome, 
I'm gonna hit this continue adding sign in there. Let's see. Okay. Okay. The next thing it wants us to do is to configure our URL types with this reverse client ID. And the way to do that is to go into Xcode. I know this is kind of tedious and a little bit confusing, but here's what they want us to do. They want us to uh, get our reverse client ID like this. Just double click that. And then go to URL types, untwirl it, hit the plus in here, uh, copy and paste that directly in there. And then it also wants us to copy this bundle identifier. Go back to info, untwirl, add, paste our bundle ID in there. And now that that is all set up, the more boring parts of this tutorial uh, hopefully is out of the way. So let's get into actual coding by first importing the Google sign-in library like that. Let's just create our sign-in button really fast uh, by saying JID sign-in button. Let's see if I get that right. Okay. Uh, frame. Uh, let's just make this a frame of 0, 0, uh, 150. Close that off. I'm going to add it as the views uh, sub view hierarchy. Sign in button, and let's just make this centered on the screen. Good out center. Cool. Let's run that, and we're going to get a very small button at the very center of the screen. Hitting that will crash because let's see what the error says um, client ID and GID sign in. Okay, that's pretty good. That's kind of where I wanted the application to be. And to fix that bug, we need to configure our Google um, shared instance and the Google context right here. So I'm going to say ggl context shared instance configure with error. And this is going to initialize our Google sign in context. Um, this error pointer needs to be an actual error. So let's create an optional error right here. Uh, let's call it NS error. And let's just pass the address. Of that error. Having done that, we will say, okay, if error is actually non-nil, we'll just print the error, and then we'll just return because none of this stuff will work if the context is not set up properly. Okay, so assuming that <clears throat> we have our context, we now will just run the application to see what the next crash will be. So hit sign in. Um, okay, so UI delegate must be UI view controller, blah, blah, blah. And it's a kind of confusing error. <clears throat> and the way to fix it is to do this. JID sign in dot shared instance UI delegate equals self. And so the question is, what is this UI delegate? So let's look at this sign in um, UI delegate there. And it's telling us to implement a couple of... Um, couple of options that we actually don't need it because they're all optional, but we just need to set this as our UI, let's see, GID, sign in, UI delegate. And that looks okay. And then next, let's see. Let's now hit the run and sign in. And everything looks okay. So now it wants me to log in with my account because I've already done so, I can automatically allow the, uh, the application to have access to my email like that. So hitting allow, uh, I've been able to sign in with my account like so. And this is my fake account, Brad Pitt, um, which the uh, application needs to be aware of, but it's not redirecting properly back to the application um, like what we want to do. So one missing part of this uh, sign-in process is to actually open the URL properly. And to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste what the guide has sort of wanted us to do. And <clears throat> so the important method is to override this open URL method there and then return all that good stuff. So I'm going to just type in that and let's just return that. And then it's actually complaining about this GID right here. So let's just fix that by importing the Google library. And <clears throat> now it's telling us 
uh, about the objective C ness of it that it doesn't like. It's going to turn on the Swift code instead. It's going to return that. And let's see. Return. And that's okay. We actually need to cast this as a string. Google's documentations are not correct all the time. And having done that, I'm going to run. Hit the sign in. Hit the allow. And everything looks okay. Um, now we have the sign in working properly. The only thing remaining is to get the actual email from the logged in user. So to do that, we will have to do something like this. So GID sign in delegate. Let's see, sign in delegate is another um, protocol that we will need to conform to. And we do that because once the user signs in, we can get the uh, get a handle on that user by using this method here. And this is part of the GID signing delegate. So let's just print out what the user's email is like that. Okay. And this will not work unless you specify that the delegate is actually self. Let's see self. <clears throat> now, so what this means is upon sign in, um, the library will call this view controller with this method with these parameters. So what I mean is the moment this happens, I'm going to set a breakpoint at line 35. Click that, sign in. It is not going to um, prompt me to sign in again because I've already done so. And next, it calls line 35 with the proper uh, user and uh, error parameters. So error is nil. Um, I guess we should actually check for that. I'll do that really fast right here. Uh, let's just print out error and return. <clears throat> so line 40 now is going to uh, give us this user here. And a GID Google user contains a profile and some email data like that. So having printed my email out, I get the actual um, email that I sign in with, which is this. And one other interesting a user parameter that you can get is this image URL with dimension. So I'm going to specify a dimension of 400 and I'm going to run that again and show you what that'll give us. Let's see if I can close that paren properly. We get sign in, everything looks okay. And then it prints out my profile portrait. I'm going to copy and paste that here. And it gives us a 400 by 400 dimension image. And if you really wanted to load that into your application, you can. And you can do with it whatever you, you want to do. So cool. That's pretty much all I wanted to go over today. If you follow the guide on Google, it's pretty helpful. And it actually follows a different path, which it um, shows you how to do all of this stuff in the, uh, the app delegate instead, which is maybe the right thing to do. But in the interest of time, I've just implemented all of this code in view controller. So this really should be only called once. So beware of, uh, you know, being smart with where you set up your context. All right. I uh, hope you liked this video. And if you want to check out the source code, this is available on the description link below. And I'll um, make sure to make more videos uh, with a more frequent um, release. Uh, okay, hope you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you find everything here helpful. All right, enjoy your day.